Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Wrath of the Righteous with me, Break It Down. Let's buff up before we My enter the Dragon's Lair. Absolute. The goddess protects us. We should only need fire protections. Though there is more than a dragon here. I am never wrong. You are my favorite aid. I've had to use a large person. Oh, let's go ahead. It's time to act. Anything new? I'll take care of it. All right, here we go. Try to get as close as we can to the dragon without making any noise. It will take it by surprise. Vapor whispers approvingly. We've crept up on the toothy old lizard without her noticing us. It's a pleasure to work with real professionals. Let's get a little closer so we can attack when she least expects it. The dragon looms over an old elf, her vicious teeth bared in an angry snarl. You recognize his face. He is called the Storyteller. I know you're in league with those little parasites who wounded me. They sent you to spy on me. They thought I wouldn't crave the crunch of your old bones. Ha, huh, they were wrong. I've always had a special liking for the taste of elven flesh, but I do love to play with my food. What can you offer me in exchange for your pathetic life? Perhaps I won't kill you if you manage to impress me. The storyteller is pale as a ghost, but he stands strong and doesn't lose his nerve, though his voice trembles slightly as he speaks. A story. Stories are all I have, but some of them are priceless, more valuable than any treasure. This I can offer you in payment. We actually have a chance at this. Now the storyteller can't die. He is an essential NPC, so it doesn't really matter what we do. Um, as a paladin, I'm not going to stealth my way into combat. Let's let the storyteller go, you monster. The dragon turns toward you in astonishment. What? You again? You sent this miserable old dotard to distract me with his chatter while you sneak up on me. No time for debate. Sure. Don't hold back. That's what you want to choose to believe. Uh, Greyboard should not be up front.
That's all right. You wounded me? Follow me here. Now you've cornered me in my lair like a mindless beast. Curse you all. Be gone, fiend! You are beyond redemption! Once I've finished with you, I'll pay a visit to your pathetic town and burn it to the ground. Dresden will burn. A mere flesh wound. Get off me, you vile parasites. Let the dragon get off the ground. She'll set everything on fire. Yeah, you're on a time limit here. You have to get to the dragon as soon as you can. Otherwise, you'll lose out on some loot. There we go. Said something there. Either way, thus falls Devara, the wound worm. Grabber looks at satisfaction of the surrounding carnage. That's a job well done. You can use your head to decorate your tent. I'm going back to Dresden. It's been a pleasure working with you. I think we should continue working together. I'm ready to offer you my services. As you can guess, a full contract will be more expensive than a one-time job. I think twelve and a half thousand gold would be a fair price. The dwarf nods politely. I don't have that amount right now. What a pity. I won't work for anything less. You get what you pay for. And my professional skills command a high price. The dwarf shrugs. Oh, safe travels. Good luck. If you'd like to hire me again, you'll find me in Dresden, but I won't be there for long. I'll likely have to leave soon, as I get my next assignment. So we still have the option to recruit him. We didn't miss out on him here. Oh, I got half of the pair. Whenever two creatures wearing different halves of this pendant are within 10 feet distance to each other, each gets a plus two circumstance bonus on attack rolls and a plus two circumstance bonus to armor class. Oh, that's really good on mounted classes as well. You can give one to your mount and one to your uh, mountee. Search for the beauty now we are down a not your eyes party member. It went splendidly. And we have another pretty tough fight ahead of us. Although this magic track is now wrap, not track, is now old and dysfunctional after centuries of disuse. It once a bit irreversibly blinded any thief who gazed upon it. I got, uh, Bracers of Abrupt Onslaught. These bracers grant the wearer a plus 5 competence bonus on trickery skill checks. Whenever the wearer makes a sneak attack, it deals additional 1d6 bludgeoning damage. There's beauty hidden in the darkest of places. Too bad no one can see it there. A failure is just a step to a success. These strange scrawls are impossible to decipher. We do it my way. Meditate the on your has mistakes. suffered enough. I make you feel better. A success worthy of praise. The inscription is written in an archaic elven script. You recognize the words Stranger's Home, I see you, and I implore Calistria. It appears to be some kind of protective spell against thieves, but has lost its power over the years. Another elven note for the storyteller. Within the pe pedestal, a faint purple glow emanates from a crystal-shaped hole. Its edges are chipped and cracked, suggesting that whatever it contained has been forcibly removed. Follow if you dare. Some demon blood, that's another uh, relic ingredient, which I don't think we've seen yet. A black frothy liquid collected from the veins of a demon after it is subjected to a procedure for magical preservation. Objects tempered in this liquid gain distinct magical properties. I'm off. 
So the loot with the hand icon like this, this is what can get destroyed by Devar if you don't kill her in time. I do what I must. It's mostly scrolls and other miscellaneous stuff, but I like my loot. Prefer it not to be destroyed by dragons. I'm gone. We found what I asked of you. Splendid. Let's get out of this place as soon as possible. All the smoke makes it difficult to breathe. We'll meet in Dresden. We do it my way. I'm gonna rest up real quick and then head downstairs. In fact, actually, I don't think I can re-enter this area without Greyborn, my party. So I'll have to make do with what we have. I'm not gonna rest up because I don't wanna be corrupted for the upcoming fight. But we still have most of our buffs up, so. We should move. I'm always open to ideas. We'll probably be okay. I'm a little nervous about it, but I've probably managed it with worse before. All right, no so we want to pause. my skills are absolute. I'll see that active. Let me help. Now some summons, and hope they don't turn against us. I'm off. You've crossed the wrong mongrel. Yeah. These enraged uh, Mandragoras are pretty nasty. It's mostly that they're hard to hit. They're chaotic evil though, so we can use smite evil on it. Might even made that fight much easier. I am your end. I think there's one more. Something over there. Also, I'm pretty sure I level up down here every time. At least it feels pretty consistent. Can't hide from me. I do what I must. I do think it's important to do this uh, this quest line earlier rather than later because of the storyteller. And uh, that way you get all the relics you can create. I mean, some of them you can't get till Act Five, just because there's only so many. I'm gone. Of the uh, resources you need. And they're in you know, deter predetermined locations. We do that it should be way. it. Let's go level up here. Alright, so level 11 Paladin, this is where we get the good stuff, Mark of Justice. But we also get a feat. Uh, let's go ahead and read that. Uh, so Mark of Justice. At 11th level, a Paladin can expend two uses of her Smite Evil ability to grant the ability to Smite Evil to all allies for one minute using her bonuses. One minute may not sound like a lot, especially when regular Smite Evil lasts until the enemy is defeated. But, enemies aren't going to last that long. I mean, that's... That's plenty of time to kill anybody. Uh, as a swift action, the Paladin chooses one target within sight to smite. If this target is evil, the Paladin's allies add her charisma bonus, if any, to their attack rolls, and add her Paladin level to all damage rolls made against the target of her smite. Smite evil attacks automatically bypass any DR the creature might possess. In addition, while smite evil is in effect, the Paladin's allies get a deflection bonus equal to her charisma bonus, if any, to their armor class against attacks made by the target of the smite. 
The paladin targets a creature that is not evil. The smite is wasted with no effect. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's still 10 rounds of smite evil for your entire party. Oh, we also get a Divine Weapon Bond plus 3. Athletics, Persuasion. Um, do we have... Alright, Dreadful Carnage. A slaying an enemy demoralizes your other nearby foes. Benefit. Whenever you reduce an enemy to zero or fewer hit points, you can make a Persuasion to Intimidate check to demoralize all enemies within 30 feet as a free action. Enemies that cannot see both you and the enemy you reduce to zero or fewer hit points are unaffected. I see love. Alright, Tasha Specialist, she gets a bonus combat feat, as well as her regular feat at level 11. Uh, trickery, Knowledge World, and Perception. Yeah, we'll get uh, Weapon Specialization Longsword. Why not? Don't need read this. We've read this several times already. It just gives you more damage on your uh, attacks with whatever weapon you choose. And I guess we'll grab Improved Vital Strike. You can make a single attack that deals a large amount of damage. Benefit. As a standard action, you can make one attack at your highest base attack bonus that deals additional damage. Roll the weapon's damage dice for the attack three times and add the results together before adding bonuses from strength, weapon abilities such as flaming, precision based damage which includes sneak attacks, and other damage bonuses. These extra weapon damage dice are not multiplied on a critical hit, but are added to the total. Socio gets a feat. Or religion, perception, and... or nature. Might do combat casting. I could do dispel focus as well. I do end up using uh, Socio as a dispel magic. Also improved initiative though. Uh, your quick reflexes allow you to react rapidly to danger. You get a plus four bonus on initiative checks. That's important, so if we're ambushed, so like when we fought Devar and those random encounters, him acting sooner can get that protection from fire out sooner. So we don't take a breath attack to the face without the appropriate protections up. Alright, uh, so land, ranger, stable company marine, what do we get? Nothing. And a feat. Athletics, mobility, perception, and lower nature. Uh, let's do improved critical. Supposedly this doesn't work with his bow, despite his bow attacks counting as unarmed for certain feats and abilities. I'll oh, do improved critical. To choose one type of weapon, when using the weapon you selected, your threat range is doubled. Special, you can gain improved critical multiple times. The effects do not stack. Each time you take the feat, it applies to a new type of weapon. This effect doesn't stack with any other effect that expands the threat range of the weapon, such as a keen modifier on a weapon. And we want the short bow. Alright, Nenio also gets a feat. Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World, Lore Nature, Lore Religion, and Use Magic Device. I think we want Meta Magic. Uh, persistent. This is really good with um, I forgot what it's called. Phantasmal Killer. Because it basically forces it to go twice. They have to succeed, I think, at four saves versus the two. So, persistent spell, meta magic. You can modify a spell to become more tenacious when its targets resist its effect. Benefit, whenever a creature targeted by a persistent spell or within its area succeeds on its saving throw against the spell, it must make another saving throw against the effect. And uh, Phantasmal Killer has two saving throws already. If a creature fails the second saving throw, it suffers the full effects of the spell, as if it had failed its first saving throw, which with Phantasmal Killer is a instant kill. 
Then level increase plus two. A persistent spell uses up a spell slot two levels higher than the spell's actual level. Spells that do not require a saving throw to resist or lessen the spell's effect do not benefit from this feat. We'll do Phantasmal Putrefication here, and but Disintegrate's always fun. Uh, but instead we'll probably do... Soraka's pretty good too. I'm going to grab that. I'll make sure our spells are slotted. I'll probably do Archon's Aura here. Another Dispel Magic. Associate Communal, fantastic buff. True Scene Communal, also a great buff. Uh, Eagle Soul is pretty good. A uh, Blade Barrier is also good. I don't like my Cleric having it, plus it can mess up your own party. A uh, Heal is also really good. I'll probably do another Sense Vital so we can have it for two fights instead of just the one. Um, animal Aspect is also good. Let's grab that instead. Uh, let's do another Slow. Uh, two castings of Phantasmal Putrefication and one casting of Sirocco. I try not to cast Sirocco until we get a wand of um forget the name of that too selective metamagic wand so it can't hit uh, hit your allies follow if you dare John a lot of blanks today So let me do that. I could go there, but I really want to rest up before I do that. Oh yeah, we gotta deal with that. I oh, know just the guy. Well, no, we're gonna try this army out. We'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. Level 3 versus level 4. I mean, we have a chance. I'm not saying it's a good chance, but... We'll see what happens. I should have looked at the enemy army first. Alright, so we have a defensive formation. Our allied units gain a plus 3 bonus to armor class. Receive a minus 2 penalty to attack. Only one formation type ability can be active. Its ability is a stratagem. And then we have dispersal of forces. All infantry, ranged, or cavalry units receive a plus one plus general's level divided by six bonus to attack and saving throws for three rounds. Its ability is a stratagem. You have to choose one of those three. Probably do sharpshooters here and then cavalry next. We also have no way to heal up our uh, <laughs> units with this. General.
This is one of the reasons why the uh, non-caster generals aren't very great. One of many reasons. It's still a very good chance that we lose this. I need to reapply this. I keep forgetting to do that. I don't really have to do this like 35 more times. <laughs> no, more than. Yeah! Uh, I might just go ahead and have him... Auto battle. Oh, don't swing, buddy. You need to stay in defensive mode. Yeah, because there's nothing else I can do besides that auto battle. I mean, it's a little less optimal because my shield bearers are trying to attack instead of just applying total defense each turn. My general's not using his abilities either. I think we're going to lose this anyway. Which is fine. It's not my main army. It's actually just a bunch of riffraff thrown together. But that does have an impact on a morale. I don't usually lose battles because I don't usually try to use my secondary army. With good reason, as you saw. Now we're going to pursue. I owe them a favor. The only problem with having one army that's so strong is sometimes it's hard to intercept approaching enemy armies. Where's it taking us? I'm hoping this isn't a fight. Recognize this. Baron Guerre. What's this? Longspear plus four. I also this guy did some work here. He's the guy from that note that we found. I also believe this encounter is specific to the Angel Mythic Path. I do what I must. So there's a note that we found in Canabras early on in 
Marion Guerra is writing the note, I think, to someone in Canabras. I'm gone. A pretty big map, for no apparent reason. Weapons, spells, poisons. The art of killing is so diverse these days. A shame one life is not enough to master them all. Right, so we want to, uh... I will help ready. where I can. Just in case there is a fight, let me get rid of all this fatigue on everybody. We do it my way. Hiya, buddy. What are you doing? A prayer to Amade flies from the lips of the kneeling old man. He speaks softly and steadily, without raising his head or otherwise acknowledging your presence. After finishing his prayer, he looks at you with clear eyes. What can I do for you, stranger? It looks like some of the demons tried to escape, but for some reason, they didn't teleport. You have a good eye. Yes, it's true. I received a special gift from my goddess. My presence makes demons weak and stops them from escaping through the plains. Tough luck for them. Did you kill all these demons? Yes. These and many others. That's what I do. You're a strong one, brother. I mean, uh, grandfather. Well, I don't know what to call you, good sir. Tila smiles widely and salutes. Something resembling a smile appears in the stern face of the old man. Tell me what you like, girl. No pathet will insult this gray head of mine. My name is Donald. I'm the Knight Commander of the Fifth Crusade. Well, my name is Baron Guerre, and I'm the commander of my own crusade. Why do you need to fight alone, Baron Guerre? You can join my crusaders. I fought under the banners of an official crusade, and I found neither righteousness nor dignity there. Forgive me, but my path is mine alone. Alright, I'll go then. May Amade keep you safe. Forgive me if I was less than friendly. The old man bows to you and leaves. There's something here. Oh, hello there. Page from a Crusader's Diary. I chased him during the day. I followed him at night. I found his tracks in the demonic wastelands of the Wound. I set up ambushes in the cities. Hunting a hunter is a strange job. The demon was seeking victims, leaving behind a trail of Crusaders tortured to death. Their hearts carved out of their bodies. And I was seeking him. Kneeling at my mighty nightly prayers, I asked myself, Why do I want to rid the world of this particular monster? New demons come almost daily from the rifts of the world wound. I could fight them wherever I wanted. I could join my crusader brethren in any garrison. But I chased him, for three years, relentlessly, like a hound following a trail. Finally, he came for me himself. My perseverance drew his attention. It made me bait. There are demons who take special pleasure in torturing the weak and helpless, but he was different. He was drawn by danger. He liked killing the strong, the proud, the unbreakable. That's what he told me. I listened to him and was horrified at how similar we were. Then we fought. I killed him. These were three long years, goddess. I was returning to Canabras after this long hunt, after an exhausting fight, carrying a terrible burden. On the fringes of the city, a light guided my way. Not your light, no. The lights of the fires near the city walls, where the Inquisitors were burning more potential renegades. I walked in my dusty armor, covered with sword marks, past the people who gathered to watch the execution. I overheard the ecstatic words of the executioner. I remembered the words the demon said before his death. I never entered the city gates. I didn't kneel in your temple. I didn't share a meal with the other crusaders. I burn... Excuse me. I, Baron Guerre the Tall, no longer belong to this in this crusade. Not after these long years. Not after I realized and heard. As it lay dying, the demon said to me, We are what you will become. I wonder if I could find that note before we spoke to him and then brought it up in conversation.
Well, either way, I'm going to call it here for now. Next time I'll return to Dresden. And actually, let's just go ahead and return to Dresden. Once again, park on top of Dresden. And then next time... Once we Dresden, we'll deal with the... Um, Beatings in the Citadel. I don't really want to spend gold on that. We're a little short on funds at the moment. I mean, that's probably fine. We'll just do 300. Yeah, we'll return to Dresden next time, deal with the stuff in the Citadel, um, speak to the storyteller, maybe get some relics crafted, and level everybody else up. And also try to recruit Greybore. We have stuff to sell, we'll probably be able to afford them next time. But for now, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.